Hi everyone, Harris here with iDownloadBlog and today we're taking a look at iOS 15. This is going to be the very first beta, but I'll be able to show you some of the big features that Apple talked about today. This wasn't the biggest iOS update ever, but it did bring some pretty cool new features, some of which people will really love and some of which just aren't working yet, but we're gonna go ahead and go through the big ones. So starting off, all the previous devices that supported iOS 14 support iOS 15. So Apple didn't drop any coverage with this new update, which is fantastic. An iPhone 6S and up will support iOS 15. Now first, something I wanna do is just show you the wallpapers that come on with this device. So if we go to wallpapers and we go to live, you see those look the same. Stills, you see that we do have this new one up here which appears to be the only new one, and dynamic is the same as we've had for years. Let's go ahead and apply this new one. Set both. And you can see this is the new wallpaper, and you can see what that looks like. All right, so this is the lock screen now, and the do not disturb toggle is a little bit different, so it's right here. And if you click on it, nothing happens, but if you long press, you can get into your new settings. And here you have your new focus options, which includes not just do not disturb, but your focus profiles, which now integrates do not disturb with a little bit of screen time-esque features to choose exactly who can notify you, what apps can notify you, and different times and locations. So you can customize these. And we'll take a look at this a little bit later, but you can add new focuses here, or new foci, I, I don't know. So on your home screen, it's gonna look very similar and you have the same widgets as before and pretty much the same home screens and stuff like that. So not a whole lot there has changed. So this is the new weather app. You can see what this looks like. It's a little bit different and we have a 10 day forecast here, which gives you the day, the precipitation, the temperature range. So you can see what that looks like. It looks pretty good. We have air quality, we have a temperature map, and then instead of like a little short list of all these extra aspects of weather, we have now just different toggles and you can see everything from UV to sunset to rainfall to the feels like temperature, visibility, and more. You can also click this map and you can see a radar of temperature, precipitation, and air quality. So this is something that most people would use different apps or websites for, but now Apple has integrated this right into the weather app on the iPhone. And then you also have the new settings for notifications so you can get alerted for precipitation starting and stopping, uh, whether that be rain, sleep, snow, etc. So that's new as well. And you see what this looks like. So now FaceTime's gotten a lot different. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch FaceTime here. And you can see right off the bat at the top, we have create link. So I can share a FaceTime link with people and they can join easily. Uh, just by that link. And with these FaceTime links, you can also get people with Windows computers or Android phones to get on your FaceTime calls by sending this link. So this is a super great new feature if you want to get people who don't have iPhones or Macs to join a FaceTime call as well. So I went ahead and FaceTimed myself and I'll go ahead and turn on the camera. So, all right, so this is my iPad screen over here and then this is me. So. I'll wave to myself. So we have a few options now. Up top we have options for muting and unmuting, just by toggling that, as well as turning our video on and off. And then we can also hop into messages right here with that person. And then we can also share our screen if we wanted to. So I could click this toggle right here and I could share my screen with my iPad or whoever else is on this call. And if I was in a group FaceTime call, I would be able to share my screen with whoever is there and we could also share music. Now we also have features such as portrait video mode. So if I click on this little toggle and I click this button, this will start portrait video. So it just blurred out the background and it looks really, really good. This is just for getting a cleaner background and stuff like that. So that's that's super, super clean. Of course, you can flip around your camera and you can also adjust your zoom from one to two X, depending on which device you have. And you can adjust your zoom on the rear camera on FaceTime, which is brand new. And that's really cool to be able to zoom in. Now, if you go into your control center, you do get some audio options. So your mic mode can be standard. It's just a normal microphone on your device. But then you also do voice isolation, so it'll try to maximize just the sound quality of your voice. And then you have wide spectrum that will let in everything. If you want to particularly show off the sounds of your environment, maybe if you hear fireworks in the background and you want someone else to be able to hear how loud it is, turn on wide spectrum and it won't isolate your voice and it'll bring in all the sounds around you. So you have a few different voice options there. And of course, we showed you the portrait mode that you can turn on and off and that lives in here. So now there is a new feature in messages. So if someone sends you something, 
whether it be an article or a song or a TV show or an album, anything like that, you can long press it and click pin or unpin. So here I have John Mayer's new album pinned. And then in theory, when you go into the respective apps, such as music, there would be a pinned section for you. That's not working currently, but if you were to click on the album, you can see that it does have the little pin indicator. And if you were to click on that, it will take you to your conversation where you pinned it from. So you can see that right there. And this will also, in theory, make things easier to find so that uh, if you pin something and you want to get back to it later, but you just don't have to, time to right then that someone sends you, you can just pin it, get back to it later. So this is a great way of not just pinning conversations and messages, but now pinning all types of media. And when you go into your info of somebody with a contact, you're going to see your pins and anything that you have saved there for quick access. So I just went to my do not disturb options and I turned on one of my focus settings and you can customize it to whatever you want and there are settings in the settings app. You can choose who can contact you, what apps can contact you, whether you can allow time sensitive notifications. This means that if somebody sends you a message, they're able to kind of emphasize it so that it gets through your do not disturb filter. You can share your focus status with others so that when someone else is typing you, they're going to be able to see that you have focus turned on. You can also customize which home screens you want to be available. You can dim your lock screen, delay deliveries so notifications don't bother you, hide notification badges on your apps, and you also smart activate it depending on time or place. So for instance, if I turn on work, it got rid of my home screens except for the one that I told it to keep. So now if we hop over to my iPad, you can see that it says that I cannot be reached right now because I have focus turned on, but I could click notify anyway, and this would go through and emphasize and be delivered on my end. There's also just new notifications. So this is called while and do not disturb and it'll kind of just accumulate any notifications that you miss. So currently I only have text messages here, but you can see that they'll pop up there. And if I had other apps, it would also show in kind of a condensed form. So lots of different and new management for notifications with the different do not disturb and focus modes on here, which is one of the big things. If we go into Safari, things look different. So you can see tabs now exist on the bottom and we can swipe between them or we can search or we can click the tab view and scroll through. You should also see your pinned view here, but it's not showing up. And if you click edit, you can also use a background image uh, just like you can on Safari for Mac. So now you can have a background image for your default view on Safari and we can search from down here. And that's a new screen or we can swipe between tabs. And we can get to our other options here, including translating the website, sharing it, reading it later, and more. If we go into notes, you can see there's a new option for tags. So in any note, if you just add a hashtag in there, it'll show up as a tag down here. So this is hashtag iMac, and I can see any of my notes that have hashtag iMac in it, such as this one. So this makes organizing notes very easy. And then maps looks very different as well as you can see the different options here. There's explore, there's driving, there's transit, and there's satellite. And explore is pretty cool. And this will be a new way of looking around and get a different view than you're used to. So those are basically the big features I wanted to cover in this first video. I will be covering iPad OS as well as more specific in-depth individual features soon in videos so leave a like if you want to see any of those and comment anything you want me to cover or show or compare in future videos thanks for watching